Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. As you are aware, this is our Truth For Youth uh, Bible Week. We have been encouraging you. These Bibles are free of charge. One free Bible per teenager in your home if your teen will commit himself to give it away to somebody at his school. Pray about it. Maybe he doesn't have somebody in mind right now. Get a copy of the Bible. Get it in his hands. Or if we you, we got a teenager listening right now, you can order up one for uh, yourself at 800-733-4737. 800-733-4737, or you can go to AFR.net where you can order up these Bibles 24 hours a day. The Bible is free. Shipping is covered. What we need is the distribution network. Revival Fires Ministry represented our, our Reverend Tim Todd. We've had generous donors that have provided the funds to purchase these Bibles. What we need is a distribution network, and that's where we want to partner with them this particular week to get the Bible into the hands of spiritually hungry teenagers. So it's a it's a terrific way for a teenager in your home, or if you're a teenager, listen to me right now, for you to be involved in dispersing the Word of God, scattering the seed as the sower did in the parable that Jesus taught, 800-733-4737, 800-733-4737. You will get a Truth For Youth copy of the New Testament that you can distribute, one per teenager. Extra copies available for just $3 and a case. If you want to buy a case of them, of 50, you can get them for just $2 a piece. Now, here's a here's Tim Todd talking about the impact that the Truth for Youth Bible can have. In a school system uh, side of Houston, Texas, two young ladies that are sisters brought their Truth for Youth Bibles to school. One of the principals of the school met these young ladies in the hallway and said, you can't have Bibles in school. This is trash. Threw them in the trash can. Called these two young ladies' mom and said, pick your daughters up or we're going to call Child Protective Services if you're not here in the next 15 minutes. This mom came to the school wondering, what did my daughters do? When she got there, she found out that these young ladies, her daughters, they were not in trouble for alcohol, not in trouble for drugs, not in trouble for having sex at the school. They were in trouble for carrying their Bibles. We got them in contact with Matt Staver from Liberty Council. He took the case free of charge and represented these young people and won the case. Part of the settlement was that the school had to purchase 1,000 Truth for Youth Bibles and give these young ladies an opportunity to give a Bible to every student in that school. That is the power of the Word of God. They had to change their policy in the school, and it all happened as a direct result of two bold sisters taking their Truth for Youth Bibles to school and standing up for God on their school campus. I want to encourage young people listening to the program today, stand up for God on your school campus, and God will bless you with everything that you need to fight this battle and be victorious. That number again for a free copy of a Truth For Youth Bible for every teenager in your home, one free for every teenager to hand out, 800-733-4737, 800-733-4737, or you can go to AFR.net. Now, um, let's talk about this business in Syria. The number to call, by the way, if you want to join the program, if you want to call in and join our conversation, is uh, 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. Five eight nine eight eight four zero is the number to call. It's free for all Friday. We'll talk about anything that's been in the news this week, anything we've talked about here on Focal Point. Particularly interested today on a couple of the topics that we've addressed today, which has to do with this mockery of Christians, this open mockery of Christians, restriction in religious liberty. Have you seen it? What do you think about it? And also what's going on with this business in uh, Syria and the president uh, leaning toward taking unilateral uh, action. Now, uh, first of all, one of the reasons he's got to take unilateral action goes back to what happened in the British Parliament yesterday. And, Jeff, let's grab sound bites uh, A8 and A9, the audio sound bites. You know, President Obama was looking at going to the U.K. David Cameron went to the Parliament and said, look, I need to get you sign off. We need to go. We need to take military action in Syria against the Syrian uh, government. Despite the fact that th right now there is there is genuine question about whether it was Assad or whether it was the rebels, whether it was Al Qaeda that was responsible for these chemical attacks. Now, for myself, I believe it was Assad. That makes the most sense to me, and what what evidence we do have would lead me in that direction. But the Associated Press had a piece yesterday said, "Look, there is no smoking gun here. We don't have ironclad evidence or proof." of who is actually responsible for this. 
And then you have this second question about whether we even have American interests involved in Syria. We have nothing to do with Syria. Now, what is happening over there is an absolute humanitarian tragedy. But there are humanitarian tragedies in every corner of the globe. If our only justification for taking military action was to intervene where there are humanitarian tragedies, we, we don't have enough people, we don't have enough money, we don't have enough weapons, we don't have a big enough army uh, to do that. So the, the purpose of having a military is to intervene and use lethal force where necessary to protect American interests, the safety and security of the American people. I just don't see that we've got an American interest involved in Syria uh, at all. But here are a couple of clips from the British Parliament, their debate yesterday where they defeated David Cameron. They turned him down. He wanted, and it was striking to me that at least David Cameron, he understood, I've got to get Parliament together. I cannot take unilateral action here. I've got to get Parliament together. They've got to vote. I've got to have them officially authorize the use of British military forces. So he did what he's supposed to do, got turned down. Barack Obama will not convene Congress. You know, Ted Cruz sent out two pictures yesterday, one of Parliament full to the gills of parliamentarians debating military action in Syria. Next to it was a picture of the Senate chamber absolutely empty because President Obama not even consulting with Congress, let alone seeking authorization from them. Here's clip one from the British Parliament debate yesterday. The question facing this House is what, if any, military action we should take and what criteria should determine that decision. It's not because of the horror of these weapons and horror exists, but because the American president foolishly drew a red line and because of his position now, he's going to attack or face humiliation. That's why we've been drawn into war. So <laughs> these British parliamentarians said, look, the only reason we would be doing this is because President Obama said something stupid. He talked about this red line, did the cowboy thing, got himself committed. You cross this line, we're coming after you. Said that a year ago. I think probably off the cuff, not thinking that Syria was ever going to call his bluff. And now he's got to back it up with some kind of foolish, impetuous, impulsive, ill-advised action. And the British Parliament said, look, we're not going to get sucked into this. Now, here's David Cameron, uh, clip nine. This is David Cameron accepting the decision of Parliament. Mr. Speaker, on a point of order, there having been no motion passed by this House tonight, can the Prime Minister confirm to the House that he will not use the royal prerogative to order the UK to be part of military, of mili of military, action, of military action, given the will of the House that has been expressed tonight before there's been another vote in this House of Commons? Order. It is, of course, not a matter for the Chair, but the Prime Minister has heard it and is welcome to respond. Point of order, and I can give that assurance. Let me say the House has not voted for either motion tonight. I strongly believe in the need for a tough response to the use of chemical weapons, but I also believe in respecting the will of this House of Commons. It is very clear tonight that the, while the House has not passed a motion, it is clear to me that the British Parliament reflecting the views of the British people, does not want to see British military action. I get that, and the government will act accordingly. So there's the Prime Minister of Britain saying, look, I defer to this body. It's your decision whether we go use force or not. You said no. I respect that. I accept that. Now let's listen to John Kerry. Uh, a couple of sound bites from what John Kerry said earlier today in this first one. He talks about all the people that they're talking to, all the people they're consulting with. You will notice there's not one word in here about doing what the Prime Minister of Britain did, which was to wait until he gets authorization, until President Obama gets authorization from Congress. And remember, it's very clear. It's been clear from day one in the, the, the day one of the Constitution, even before that, the Articles of Confederation, that only Congress can declare war. Listen to this soundbite from John Kerry and see if you hear any indication on his part that the Obama administration is thinking about waiting for authorization from Congress. We will continue talking to the Congress, talking to our allies, and most importantly, talking to the American people. President Obama will ensure that the United States of America makes our own decisions on our own timelines based on our values and our interests. 
So that's uh, John Kerry, and you'll notice all he pledges to do is to talk to Congress, the indication being that he hasn't yet or hasn't at least had any meaningful uh, conversations with Congress, no meaningful interaction with Congress, and most importantly, to talk to the American people. In other words, he realizes he doesn't have Congress with him. I've got a story here today where 18 Democrats have come out, 18 Democrats, and said, look, President Obama has got to get authorization from Congress. Now, Rob, let's grab clip number six. This is Charles Krathammer. Let's hit this very quickly. Charles Krathammer talking about the humiliation that Obama suffered at the hands of the British Parliament. This is a complete humiliation for the Obama administration. Forget about the merits of what Obama wants to do, which I think, I think it's a, a bad idea. But let's assume it's a good idea. Uh, th this involves the elementary conduct of international diplomacy, trying to get some allies aboard so you don't act unilaterally. So who's the main ally in the world who's been with us in every trench for the last hundred years? The British. And now the British have voted against us. The other supposed ally was the French, President Hollande, and now he's saying, well, we got to wait for the report from the UN inspectors, which will be early next week. So here is Obama and the, the, the Democrats who railed against the Bush administration for its supposedly unilateral invasion of Iraq, where we had 48 allies for a mission that involved boots on the ground, a real invasion, a real war. And here's Obama trying to gather an ally or two for a pinprick, and he gets nothing. This is just on the basis of thinking ahead, let's say a week ahead, when they leaked all this information about exactly what we're going to hit, where we're going to hit it, what the reasons are and the objectives are, are we going to have a coalition of the willing? Did nobody actually think to check on the allies? I mean, these are guys who couldn't organize a three-car funeral. So that's Charles Cranhammer. These guys, President Obama, this White House, this administration, this Secretary of State, this hand-picked DOD, these guys could not organize a three-car funeral. Remember, President Bush got 110 allies to go into Iraq. Obama has got nothing back in two.